All right, yeah. It's time for part two, which is going to be floors four, five, and six. As you can see, we've already cleared all of them on 16. So you're going to once more get a free to play comp and a plus 16 comp. Uh, if I'm not as enthusiastic as I might be in uh, my other videos, uh, the reason for that is because I did this whole thing already and the footage got corrupted. So I just have to do this all over again. But that is, is not the important part. The important part is this is a free to play comp and you can get plus 16 easily. So stage 4 is the easiest stage in the whole tower and that's why we're going to speed run this bitch right now. So. We have no time to lose, we have videos to make, and the good part is I have the strategies in my head still. So uh, at least not all hope is lost. So first off we'll be tanking with Oleg, and uh, uh, the, basically this is this is like gear A2, right? We all know gear A2 with the, with the, like, the runny boys, and you put in like your decimals, and they crash into him, then they crash again, and then they die. This is basically what we'll be doing here. So we place in decimus, they crash in once, lose 80%, crash in again, lose another 80%, we remove decimus, they crash into another target, boom, dead. So that is basically what we'll be doing here. Uh, and we'll be just doing it again. The cool part is we are already playing at the highest modifiers. So 16 is honestly super easy on, uh, on stage 4, which is really, really great for uh, honestly all players. Because why shouldn't there be an easy stage? So yeah, as you can see, the step right here is to put Volker behind. Because we need to defend against the skeletons. And then this guy is going to crash in, but that's fine. Because we're just going to de defend against the other two guys that actually come running here. So once those again run into them, we just uh, remove. And then right there, they run into Oleg. And then if Oleg actually dies, that is when we're going to put in Baron. But as you can see, everything is fine. If your uh, if your Volker dies, uh, if your Oleg dies, right, just swap in a Baron and it's gonna work. So there we go. Everything going nice. Everything going smooth. Twenty out of twenty nine enemies. And then here. Uh, Obviously, they're going to try to uh, hit our shield. We'll be once more placing in a decimus to actually uh, get this done. Runs in, hits once, hits twice, time to go out. Here we increase the block of Oleg to ensure that no one actually passes him. And then it should be about time he dies, which is when we actually bring in Baron. So, uh, or Baron normally just is ready anyway for you, depending on how the stage goes, right? But it is it is really a simple core concept that you just time well with Decimus and a Volker and you're going to be good. So there we go, very first stage done in the speedrun edition. I'm not going to finish this because I only have seven more entries and I don't want to risk it. This is basically done on to the next one. All right, so uh, as with the last video, if you do fancy what I'm doing, feel free to leave me a like, potentially a comment, and if you really do like what you see, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, honestly, I am even more happy with this video rather than the six hours corrupted data. So at the end of the day, it wasn't all bad on with the video. Time for the free to play version of stage five. We'll be actually getting 14 out of 16 tokens. And what we have deactivated is the restrictions down to four units. So let's not talk around uh, about it. Well, you get what I mean too much. Let's get straight into the stage because I'm on a timer. So we'll be starting it off with Idril taking care of this um, lonely tentacle dude. Perfect. And then we have this guy walking in. As soon as he enters this tile, we'll be using the once more half block pushback method to push the unit back, which means the unit will attack later, which also means Abomination will take less damage. If Abomination takes less damage, he needs less healing and he also is at less of a risk of dying. So yeah, Abomination is face downwards and either will for the moment stay on the field. Our next point is going to be to bring in Volker. Volker is going to give Abomination some extra healing. 
and we're going to be using Idrid's ultimate to take care of this super super annoying uh, yeah super annoying electromage abomination has his ultimate ready and that is going to help us clear out whatever is left here and then it's already time for us to bring in uh, our healer so we'll be bringing in vortex Alright, perfect. Enemies come in. And we can just use Volker's ultimate to start taking care of them. So, Idrid is going to uh, continue shooting this lightning mage. And Abomination is going to get healed by uh, Vortex. Furthermore, we we'll start to kind of, in a sense, upgrade our formation by introducing Gluttony and Wrath and then the last one we'll be placing is Isolde but uh, you'll see exactly how we place her. So Abomination is now fully stacked and battle ready. And we we'll, we'll let those guys pass actually. We we'll let these guys go through and then for the stun bombers We'll actually also wait on those, because they can actually help us. Here is when we put in the tank. We use Idris ultimate to start targeting this uh, special dude right there. The units are getting stunned, but we have a lot of block. And this is already end of the run. It is a very solid run, there is no RNG involved. And uh, yeah, we just finished the run. Interestingly enough, this is basically a light version of, um, of obviously the 16 strategy and that is what we're going to be doing right after. Once more, the stage is done, but I have to quit earlier so I don't lose my entries and risk not being able to provide you with the runs you want. Alright, time for the 16 out of 16 and you need only one legendary unit and that unit is going to be Artemis. So, shall we get straight into the fight? Here we go. Obviously Abomination is A0, Volker is A5 because of Tide, but Volker doesn't need to be A5 for the strategy and Wrath is obviously A5. Alright, so here we are, time for the stage and we'll be starting it off at 16 cost using Wrath at this top tile right there. And then as soon as this uh, Lightning Mage whatever thing dies, there we go. It is time to put an abomination facing downwards just so he can get a slight bit of rage because that rage the earlier abomination triggers his ultimate the better it is for us actually. So here we fast forward time as you can see up until 20 cost because there is no ultimates we need to trigger and overall we have very few units on the field anyway. So. Here, instead of using the 16 cost to get Wrath, we'll actually be using the 18 cost to get ourselves Artemis. So Artemis goes in, should save Volker from the brink. There we go. Then we'll also use Volker's ultimate, which restores a bit of her health. After this mark target dies, which should take some pressure off of uh, off of um, Artemis and then as soon as we hit 16 cost it is time for this lightning mage to actually say good bye bye then the same thing once more as soon as the lightning mage dies so right here we take out wrath and now we basically just pay attention right here Artemis is going to be able to keep all our units nice and healthy. Vort, uh, Abomination should any second get ready to actually uh, trigger his ultimate. Perfect. As you can see it is pretty close but this Artemis is a zero. No gear, nothing special, no pantheon stats so you can exactly copy what I'm doing right here. 
And then right, uh, right here we actually wait. We do not use our ultimates because we want these stun bugs to actually come close to us. Now this might seem counterintuitive, but they will explode at a very, very opportune moment for us. So right here we go with Volker. Bring in Wrath right behind the enemies. And Wrath is now the one being targeted, which means uh, uh, Artemis can worry about freshing everyone up. Wrath is also going to give us a bit more block. And then when all these enemies come storming in, that is when we trigger Artemis ultimate for some extra bit of damage. And that is what allows us to kill those in time before they actually move past. So as you can see, even though we only have four block total, we still manage to beat the stage. Artemis will die, but it really truly doesn't matter. And at this point, you can even take out Volker. And the last step is going to be waiting for Artemis and um, Rev to be back. These guys can't walk into the, uh, into the core anyway. So at this point, it's already GG. And the last thing that we're going to be doing is place down Rev. Placed on Artemis. And then once more before we end the stage, because I only have seven runs left, this stage is cleared. Enjoy. All right, yeah, here we go. Final stage. Stage six, epics only, 12 out of 16, 10 units. Out of all of those, there's only going to be a couple relevant ones. And those are going to be Wrath. Gluttony, Ein, Cyrene, Midan, Vortex and Hollow. Pretty much um, Daemon, uh, what the hell is your name? Komo Daemon, Komodo and uh, what the hell? Scorch, there we go. Scorch are basically just RNG equalizer. Those guys are going to be there for if someone gets permanently frozen or overall to just um, basically keep our engine going. And what engine am I referring to? The engine is called the Gluttony Eat Up All You Can Eat Buffet. All right, yeah, here we go straight into the stage and straight off the bat, we'll be going with Serene. So Serene's purpose is going to be to give us cost regeneration to make up for the fact that we're regenerating cost 40% slower. So uh, she gave us the cost and now it's time for Vortex to uh, help her out a bit and keep her alive. So right now we won't be doing much besides waiting for this guy to get rather close to this tile so we can place down Gluttony. The reason for that is so that Gluttony doesn't trigger his ultimate against the small fry but that he actually one shots the big golem. That is uh, obviously the goal and helps us with getting our rotation straight. So there we go, Gluttony first buffet of the day, ate him up and now we bring in my favorite uh, just from the title, the RNG equalizer where we fuck the developers back because this winter spite is super annoying but we can remove it with Midan. So yeah, Midan in my heart is uh, one of the stars of this run, that is for sure. So right now, here's the goal to obviously use Ein and Gluttony to, in conjunction, uh, try to kill these units before they actually take up a block, a block space of Gluttony. So there we go. None, none inside. And then we bring in Wrath. Wrath is there to obviously take care of the top lane. Hollow to give us some more rage region. And with Midan, you want to pay attention to either Wrath getting frozen, Serene getting frozen, or Gluttony getting frozen. If any of those get frozen, you can use her ultimate to unfreeze them, because these are kind of like the breaking points of the strategy. Now we just get four small fry. Have you seen that? I actually summoned spears against that guy. Isn't that great? <laughs> so, uh, nobody is frozen. Everybody's looking quite well. 
So I guess you could do this at plus 14 if you take out the, the three units that we're not using at the moment. But like I said, they're basically just there to ensure that nothing goes wrong. They are there to ensure that if someone passes, we still have an answer to deal with them and we don't need to rely on everything going perfectly. Like for example, I'm getting killed here. We can then put in someone like a daemon to do some extra damage against them to weaken them before they actually reach gluttony. And then while they are on the way, we can, for example, put in Scorch to burst them or blast them with fire from behind and use Midan to cleanse the Winter Spite stacks. Gluttony was already on two of those, so he would have been, fro been frozen any second now, really. So yeah, so far so good. And this is kind of the reason why we're not going with seven units, because it's always better to have someone for a scenario that you can't predict. Like, for example, Gluttony being frozen here. So that is why we bring in Daemon. And here Komodo will actually get his chance to shine. Komodo in the 1v1. Can he do it? Here we go with Ein for support. And we need to pay attention to the top here. Oh. Come on. This this is why I love Deimos. His respawn time is so short. You can use him for so many different purposes. Okay, last golem got snagged up. And right here we only need to pay attention to her potentially getting frozen. If we see any sign of Winter's Bite, that is when we actually use Midan's ultimate to get rid of it. There we go. Looks good. And that is indeed a job well done this guy is basically dead i don't want to use the key and on to the next one all right time for the final stage of this video 16 out of 16 stage 6 what you're going to need is wrath arrogance volker and helga helga could be replaced by any other ranged uh, fighter probably arrogance too but I was, uh, I thought about, hmm, how about we use Helga in a guide? Because we all are doing the Helga fusion at the moment. So it's something to look forward to. So I thought it was kind of a nice idea to try and make her work. This might actually be a trash tea idea in your eyes. It depends. But uh, yeah, we'll be starting it off with arrogance. And let me tell you to you straight. This is going to be RNG mania. I've done this run more times than I want to tell you. And uh, the whole reason for that is the design of the stage. So every one of those enemies will be having a percentage chance to inflict this disgusting Winter Spite. And if three Winter Spite stacks land on an enemy, they get frozen. If your unit gets frozen, they obviously don't do nothing. They stop an ultimate, they don't regenerate rage, they don't attack, they don't block. So if this happens at an unopportune moment, you're just going to lose. And uh, that is basically the way it is. There is, there is a lot of RNG in this run. So if you truly want to do it 16 out of 16, get ready to suffer a bit, but it is definitely manageable. So next step is going to be Helga in. And right here, for example, Wrath could have already been frozen. Wrath could have already died. It, it really depends. Though there is, there is a lot that this run can actually handle when it comes to um, bad RNG. So for example, Wrath got frozen here, but that's fine because right here we bring in Volker. The cool part about Volker and Helga is Helga hits actually three times. So re she restores three times as much HP as someone normally would. And also something I really love about Arrogance is his timing. Arrogance ultimate for this run is always ready when he needs to be. It's, it's like he knows when he's supposed to be ready. So. Right here, we'll be going with the Helga ultimate as soon as this guy enters her range. Because these guys, uh, basically Helga is pretty vulnerable at the top there. She does her job, but she doesn't nearly do it as good as Arrogance does it. So we do need to use uh, the ultimate for that purpose. Next off, we need to bring in Wrath. So depending on when he died, it might be earlier, it might be later. The main goal is that Wrath is going to be able to block two of these guys. And then the rest are going to be blocked by Volker. For Volker, we'll be using her ultimate to ensure that these guys die. 
perfection. And then uh, we got fucked. <laughs> so yeah, we see each other at the exact same point. So here's another curious scenario. Wrath died so late that he isn't even ready. <laughs> uh, which means we'll be utilizing him at the top here to stop these guys. So yeah, you have to be a bit adaptable when it comes to uh, when it comes to the stage. But once more, arrogance is hopefully going to carry our asses hard because look at him. His ultimate is ready when he needs to be. He is cooking. So yeah, there he goes, smashing these enemies into bits. And the plan with Volker, uh, with uh, Helga at the top there, is for her to actually take care of that guy himself, herself. Because if she does, we'll be using her ultimate to kill this guy instantly. So yeah, like like I said, this strategy can take a lot of abuse. It just, uh, it just requires you to uh, not not be patient, not even adapt the strategy. Just trust the process, kind of. This strategy might look a bit wonky, but it works pretty well, and it's kind of a just trust the process pr process. <laughs> So yeah, Arrogance once more ready at the opportune moment. We'll be using Volker's ultimate to take care of these two guys. Helga is dealing very, very well with the top guy. Though we will be holding Wrath. So Wrath is basically our emergency button. If anything goes wrong, like for example, Helga gets frozen for whatever reason, or uh, Volker gets frozen, then we'll be bringing in emergency Wrath. For the moment, we just have him like kind of like ins as insurance. We have him on, on our hand as insurance. So right here, Volker is perfectly doing uh, dealing with this guy. And like I said, it's more of a trust the process strategy. So important note here is when you defend with Wrath for the second time against the four minions, pick him up. You, you do not need him for the double golem phase. Okay, now we actually cleared and lost an entry, but this is what I do for you. So this has been stage 3 to stage 6, free to play and um, 16 out of 6, uh, epic only and 16 out of 16 comps. But to be fair, they were actually pretty similar this time. So see you at 7 to 9.